Seventy years ago, Langston Hughes asked the deep and abiding question, what happens to a dream deferred? It's the opening line to his poem Harlem, which reads, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat, or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? Hughes was writing from his own experience as a black man in Jim Crow America, and his poetry, taken as a whole, reflects not just on the experience of African Americans at that time, freed slaves and their children, but on the hopes of immigrants and people of color that have been hung upon the so-called American dream, a reality rarely realized. To encounter this poem is to wonder first about the dreams we have, and then whose dreams are deferred, and deferred until when. As a straight, cisgendered white woman, I know that many of the dreams I've had for myself have been well within my reach. Few of the hopes I have for my daughters will be deferred by glass ceilings. But I know other parents are not at all sure of the future available to their undocumented dreamer, their non-binary offspring, their child with autism. But deferment doesn't stop us from dreaming. But then there is this question, what does God do with a dream deferred? In today's Old Testament reading, David, resting from his conquering and having brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, David, cozy in his palace, dreams of making a palace for God, a house where the Ark of God may stay. And God says, no. Well, actually, first God says, yes. Yes, you have a house. And yes, I promise to make of you a house, a long-lived dynasty. But to build a house for God? No, David, that dream is not for you. A dream deferred. What will God do with our dreams deferred? What of the local businesses, the congregations, for whom the pandemic will be the death now, who prayed and dreamed of a vibrant, vital future, but instead will walk the holy and hellish path of closure? What of the healing in body, mind, and soul for which we prayed when a life ends in hospice care? A few weeks ago, we had a Zoom call with our siblings in Chichipate. What of their prayers for their young people who, seeing no opportunity to grow and thrive in Guatemala, hand over lifetime's savings to dangerous and unreliable coyotes? What does God do with a dream deferred? Now, I don't want to take this lightly. The kind of dream Langston Hughes referred to, the kinds of dreams that we see deferred in our day, these dreams are real and they are pressing and urgent. They are not about building luxury buildings where an elite chosen few may preside. David's dream is that of a conqueror looking to solidify his reign and ensure for himself a lasting legacy. And yet there is something about this grand dream of the eighth son of a sheep farmer. David was promised nothing in his life except to hope for the compassion of his big brothers. And yet here he was, king of the people of God, and he did not want to squander that opportunity. But God's answer was to tell David that his dream was not to be fulfilled in his lifetime 
that his dream deferred would be rebuilt into the dreams and realities of his children and grandchildren for a great many generations, a dynasty spanning over four centuries. This no to David's dream to build the temple was rebuilt into a yes that stretches into our day, a people free to worship God in hope. When our dreams dry up, crust over, explode, as Hughes predicts, what does God do? When everything we hope for becomes nothing more than sand running through our fingers, when we ourselves are reduced to dust beginning right back where we started, what then? Then God rebuilds our broken dreams into the realities that answer the earnest prayers of God's people the world over. Tom Schumann, a Presbyterian pastor and poet, wrote this poem, probably for Ash Wednesday. It's called Ashes of Dreams Unfulfilled. Remember, you are ashes of dreams unfulfilled, of loves burnt in passion, of sepia-coated photos in our minds. Remember, you are dust of stars which exploded light years away, of words uttered so long ago, of fears hiding under our bed. Remember, you are gods who mixes all the ashes of our failed promises to be more faithful, more just, more loving, with the dust we have shaken from our feet as we took our own paths, using them to mark the Godhead on this pilgrimage of trust. Remember, you are remembered by God. So, beloved, what... Does God do with a dream deferred? Remakes it into something that more closely resembles God's own dream for a world restored, recreated, remembered. Each time the temple that David so longed to give to God, each time that it was reduced to rubble, It became a chance for the people, not just the ruler, but all the people of God to draw close to God, to restore relationships with one another, to renew the covenant, and to be revived. What does God do with our dream deferred, with a no to our long-held hopes? Reduces them to ash, and rebuilds them into someone else's yes. Amen.